welcome to a review of the EcoWit Wi-Fi weather station, model number GW1002. Now, this has been kindly provided for us to review for you. Um, as you know, outbuilding security, really important, and what better than being able to monitor the weather conditions both in and outside your pub shed, your home bar, your outbuilding. And so that's what we're looking at today. We're going to Let's unpack this box and see what's inside. So what can this weather station actually record? Well, firstly, we've got the wireless anemometer. So that is basically able to record the wind speed and direction with the rotating cups on top and the direction vane underneath. You have the self-emptying rain collector, which is this one here. Um, so clearly that's going to measure the rainfall amounts. And we have the temperature and humidity sensor, which is combined into one unit. And then we have the USB gateway here. And that's the bit which pushes all the data up to the um, app and, and onto the internet as well. Now, the, uh, the actual um, USB gateway also features an indoor temperature and humidity and air pressure sensor as well. So you can collect all that data from inside your outbuilding so you can keep an eye on things as well. Now, additional optional extra sensors that you can purchase. You can get a lightning sensor. You can have up to eight multi-channel temperature and humidity sensors in addition to the ones that are provided. You can also um, get up to eight soil moisture sensors, up to four air quality sensors and up to four water leak sensors. And they're also looking to develop future sensors as well. The wireless anemometer package assembly comes in four main sections in the box. You have the wind cups on top, they're separate, the wind vane underneath, and you have the main unit itself as well as the mounting brackets. And the, uh, the actual pole itself is not included. The anemometer cups and the wind vane are really easy to attach onto the main units. Um, there's simply a screw on each that you tighten once you've gently pushed it onto the metal spindles. Just be careful with the spindles because they are slightly D-shaped in profile, so you need to make sure they do match up properly with the holes on the cups and the wind vane. The sensor reporting interval for the anemometer unit is 16.5 seconds. And in terms of the uh, anemometer sensor itself, it has a built-in solar panel, but uh, clearly that's only functioning in the daytime, so it also requires a backup battery for the sensor. And um, it's probably worth investing in a lithium battery for that. Lithium batteries tend to perform better in those lower temperatures. The wind speed range that this can record is between zero to 50 meters per second, which is approximately equal to zero to 100 miles per hour. And we also have some stats on the wind speed accuracy. So that is plus or minus one meter per second for speeds that are less than five meters per second, or plus or minus 10% for speeds that are greater than or equal to five meters per second. Now, another way is that they are plus or minus 0 0.1 miles per hour for speeds less than 11 miles per hour, or plus or minus 10% for speeds that are greater than or equal to 11 miles per hour. So if we take a look at the top part of this um, anemometer uh, unit as well, you can see here there are, there are two other sensors also integrated into the unit. And the first is um, that we have a UV sensor, and that has a UV index range of between 0 to 15. We also have a light sensor, and that has a light range of between 0 to 120 kilo lux, and a light accuracy of plus or minus 15%. Now it's really nice to have just one of these sensors included in a weather station, let alone two, so we really are spoilt here. This is fantastic to have this um, integrated into the weather station as well. You can also see here is the solar panel that we mentioned earlier and the battery compartment. This is the rain gauge and it essentially comes in four main parts. Firstly, there's the, the metal mounting pole here uh, with the associated uh, brackets. There's the actual funnel itself, the collection funnel here. Inside that you have 
the uh, debris screen there that filters out any leaves and insects, that kind of thing. And then there's the main rain gauge unit itself with a tipping bucket mechanism inside. Now the battery compartment will take one um, lithium battery. It's recommended to use lithiums uh, to take those lower temperatures. And it comes disassembled, but it's very easy to show you what it looks like inside. We take that top part off there. You can see the tipping bucket mechanism inside there. And there's also the handy um, bubble level there, so you can really set that up perfectly how you want it. The debris screen there just pushes down and there's a little loop underneath which clips it into place on the actual funnel itself and the funnel. Uh, you just push that into its position and rotate it to lock it in place. So it really is very straightforward to get up and running. Some statistics about the rain gauge sensor are that its reporting interval is 49 seconds. It has a rain volume display range of 0 to 6,000 millimetres on the app. Uh, a rain volume accuracy of plus or minus 5% and a rain volume resolution of 0 0.1 millimetres or 0 0.01 inches. The temperature and humidity sensor is a really nice little device. As you can see, it's got the LCD screen here displaying the temperature in degrees C and the relative humidity in percentage. It's a nice compact unit um, and it would do best to be somewhere that's um, sheltered uh, in terms of being in the shade away from direct sunlight and radiant heat sources. Um, better still if you can place it within a solar radiation shield um, which is not included obviously but you could um, put it in something like a Stevenson screen if you have one available. Now this takes two AA batteries and it has a sensor reporting interval of 64 seconds. The temperature range it measures is between minus 40 to plus 60 degrees C, with a temperature accuracy of plus or minus one degree C, which is equivalent to roughly plus or minus two degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature resolution is 0 0.1 degrees C, and the humidity range is between 10 to 99%, with an accuracy of plus or minus 5% and the humidity resolution is 1%. The sensor data itself can be uploaded to the ecowits.net website, uh, the wonderground.com website, the weathercloud.com website, and the wow.com website as well. Um, and also it can be um, pushed to a mobile app, which you can download on your mobile phone or tablet as well. Now this part is the Wi-Fi gateway and it consists of the main module you can see here with some LED indicator lights and a, a button on there as well uh, which is the Wi-Fi configure slash reset button. Now this um, device also has um, a sort of aerial coming up here um, and we haven't quite installed this fully yet but um, you need to try and keep it in the vertical position so we'll just loop that round at the top for now. There we go. Um, so the Wi-Fi um, bit connects via USB and it's this bit which then uploads your data or pushes your data um, to the internet. And um, essentially it also has three sensors built into it as well. So it has a temperature sensor, a humidity sensor and a barom barometric pressure sensor as well. Now the temperature range for measuring these indoor um, temperatures is between 0 and 50 degrees C of the resolution of 0 0.1 degrees C. Humidity range is between 1 to 99% with a resolution of 1%. And the barometric pressure range is between uh, 300 to 1100 hectopascals. And uh, the barometric pressure accuracy is plus or minus 3 hectopascals in 700 to 1100 hectopascal range. And for the barometric pressure resolution... So the WS View app is downloadable uh, on mobile phone or tablet. And so we've got it displayed on our tablet at the moment. And as you can see, it's, um, it fits the top half of the screen. It's not quite going down to the bottom. And unfortunately, it doesn't um, allow you to rotate um, the screen so it's horizontal. Um, so you have to have it in the, in the portrait mode, if, as, as it were. Um, but that's okay. Um, it displays all the data on there, all the parameters, indoor temperature and humidity, outdoor temperature and humidity, um, absolute and relative pressure, which you can adjust depending on sea level. 
solar radiation, UV index, wind speed and wind gust speed, as well as the direction. Also below is the daily wind maximum and all the rainfall events as well. The side menu in this screen um, has several options too. Um, you can um, go to weather services, which is all about uploading your weather to the EcoWits websites and others. Calibration there, so you can adjust um, the various parameters up or down if needs be. Um, rain totals, which you can set or change. Um, device settings uh, as well that's specific to this device um, sensors ID if we go ahead and hit the sensors ID um, then it'll give you information about all the sensors it's currently detecting so down the side here uh, you've got the radio signal which is high for all of them and a battery level as well which is um, showing for the anemometer We've got our data uploading to the um, Weather Underground website, wonderground.com, um, and um, from that it can actually um, feed back into the app and show all sorts of graphical displays and data as well, which is a really nice feature. So you can see here we've got the graphing for the temperature and dew points, humidity, pressure, wind gust and average, uh, wind direction, precipitation, and then the solar radiation and the UV index as well, all graphed really nicely on the screen. Now we mentioned earlier that we have a semi-professional station uh, running alongside the EcoWit station as well. Well, here's a um, capture of the graphical display from um, the semi-professional station. And if I can quickly swap over, I'll show you the data from the EcoWit. And here's the EcoWit data. And you can see that they're very closely aligned. And in fact, the EcoWit updates to Weather Underground every minute, whereas the semi-professional station I have is every five minutes. In summary, the EcoWit.net Wi-Fi weather station has been really easy to install and really easy to get up and running with the Wi-Fi capability. Um, that was really quick. The sensors uh, were registered straight away very promptly. Um, and the signal strength has been excellent. And we have these scattered around our garden. So to pick up the strong signal um, so far has been brilliant. Now, clearly the proof is gonna be in the long-term running of the station. And we might do a future update just to keep, keep you posted on how that's going. But initial impressions so far have been really positive. We like the look of the station. We like the ease of installation and we like the amount of features you get for your money. This is a really, really affordable station for your outbuildings, enabling you to monitor the conditions both inside and outside. And normally that would come at an extraordinary cost. Now we have a semi-professional station as well as this one, and we've been comparing data. And uh, I have to say that the data is very closely aligned between the two stations, and that's a real positive. Now I suppose in terms of things to improve, well, um, for us, it's always the case with some of these uh, more affordable stations is that the data update intervals can be relatively long. Um, so the, the wind speed, for example, updating um, in the period of time that it does means that it might miss some of those gusts. But that, you know, that's a minor detail, really. If this is about monitoring your outbuilding, then this is certainly going to do that job. We also like the idea of um, other sensors available and the fact that they're thinking about developing future sensors too. So that really does uh, hopefully future-proof this weather station. So we highly recommend this. It's the EcoWit Wi-Fi weather station model number GW1002 from ecowits.net. Now, if you like what you've seen today, please head on to our YouTube channel if you're not there already. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell icon to PubSheds TV, which is at youtube.com slash c slash PubSheds. Thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen today, then please consider heading over to our PubSheds TV YouTube channel if you're not there already at youtube.com slash c slash PubSheds. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell icon to stay updated with the latest videos from PubSheds TV. Thanks for watching.